Hello, everyone. Thanks for taking the time today and coming to learn about Splunk and extending Splunk into your development environments. My name is Mark Groves. I'm a senior director of product management at Splunk. Um, I work out of the Seattle office. We're headquartered here in San Francisco, but we do all of our developer platform work up in, uh, up in Seattle. So I flew down today to kind of be with you guys today. How many of you guys are developers? You call yourself to no developers? There's a developer, okay, at least I got a hand, okay, good. That's okay, you guys can bring some of this data back and maybe I'll actually convert some of you guys to developers through this talk. So Splunk Enterprise really empowers developers to, um, with application intelligence across their whole development lifecycle. You know, one of the things that's really important for developers and uh, IT teams in general is to gain agility through what they're building and how they get data from their systems to turn that around and make that actionable in, in their environments. So it could be everything from monitoring, using Splunk to monitor their code check-ins to what they're doing in their dev environments so that they can get better understanding before they deploy their software into production environments and give you guys a hard time, I assume, uh, if, if you actually have failures in production. Uh, additionally, we built, um, Splunk has the ability for developers to build complete end-to-end -end solutions with application uh, UI that they can tie into their own experiences. Um, and then uh, additionally, they can pull data out of their systems, both from log data, and uh, I'll go into more detail about that, but also directly logging out of their applications into Splunk in a semantic logging way so that they can tell the system details about what's going on. So let's drill in here a little bit. So the whole point in software development over the last several years is really about gaining application intelligence and being more iterative in your development cycles. You'll see companies move from what, you know, I, I used to work in Microsoft several years ago and we had two, three year long release cycles. And now we're down, you know, companies are moving to six week, uh, month long, day, multi-day uh, uh, deployments. So to be able to actually re reduce that time to deployment is really critical. And tools inside of Splunk, giving that data to developers and the IT teams and being able to find out what's going wrong is really makes people resolve things quicker and get those things out to their customers quicker. Um, additionally, you, you need to be able to, how you do that is be able to get data from your applications from, into logs and get the details into Splunk so that you can tie these things together. Additionally, um, you can start tying in business metrics, right? So we have things around, maybe you have customer IDs, uh, order IDs, things along those lines, and being able to pull those and aggregate that into Splunk really makes it possible to kind of really understand what your customers are doing with your applications. For example, um, Target uh, uses Splunk throughout their development environment to analyze their t dev and test environment. So before they produce to production, they're actually figuring out, is this release going to be better than the last release? Do they actually degrade in any functionality from the previous releases? And getting that analytics is key for their success. So development use cases are critical for mature applications, right? So strategic uh, customer adoption, being able to customers start with app management and being able to manage the data that's coming out of their applications. Um, and their ability to kind of turn that data around makes them quicker to be able to go from managing applications to deploying those in environments. So just reducing the mean time to re resolution is huge. And Splunk's infrastructure allows you to do that. So being able to actually log data into Splunk so look at a general purpose data engine. It'll take pretty much any, any unstructured data itself. Um, but one of the things that we tell developers particularly, um, first of all, you probably, if you guys, man, do you guys manage applications, you manage applications in your environments, one thing that we'll see is lots of different log formats. People, each developer writing their own thing. One thing that we suggest to developers when they're starting to log is to use semantic logging. So what this really means is instead of just logging straight flat text out, actually put in a key value pair relationship. Could be something like JSON or uh, even just XML, just being able to get that data out in a structured format so that whenever you go and searching over it in the future, you'll be able to associate what that data was, what the actual type of that data is with, with the information that's in there. This is just a general best practice, but it really becomes in the key whenever 
you're going to aggregate this data together in Splunk. So uh, developers can actually use and integrate Splunk using all our SDKs. Uh, we have several customers that are using between uh, our REST API. We have a REST API with over 200 endpoints that basically anything you can do in Splunk has access to it via the SDK or the API. And then additionally, we have uh, SDKs that allow you to interact with that. For example, Comcast uh, is using our Java SDK to pull data out of out of all their um, their cable boxes to be able to get analytics about who's using what pieces, what is the best optimal time to maintain those those cable boxes and update them with patches. And so it's it's great to be able to get data out of those devices and pull that right into Splunk. Let's drill in a little bit to the dev platform. So this is really where all the powers and layers of Splunk. So Splunk's architecture really allows for um, collection at the end node, so it could be network devices, web servers, uh, any, any device kind of in your environment to be able to collect data and send that into our indexing tier. From our indexing tier, we're then able to like, do our search processing languages over top of that. From there, though, we have all of our capabilities to build applications around that infrastructure. So the whole developer platform is kind of two major pieces. The ability to build Splunk apps and then also either extend or integrate with Splunk. So we'll drill in first on what it means to build a Splunk application. One of the things that we really wanted to do when we started building out our web framework is adopt open technologies. Make it so that developers could take things they already knew. If you're a web developer and you're familiar with jQuery and um, uh, things like uh, Django on the server side, and Backbone JS, we want to, be able to use that leverage you already have, and then be able to invest in just doing the simple things that is to get data out of Splunk. So we did that, um, and then we also have a pretty powerful dashboarding language called Simple XML. That if you if you want to stay more declarative, you can do that and build dashboards using Simple XML. The Simple XML infrastructure is all built on top of this architecture, so that you can actually start with Simple XML building simple dashboards. And then if you want to add more additional functionality, you can convert that into the JavaScript layer and move forward. One of the things that you might be interested in is we have several applications out there targeted towards uh, Cisco solutions. For example, we have uh, applications uh, for iOS and uh, um, UCS. And so these are just some examples of applications that people built on top of Splunk. But I'll drill in and kind of take you to a much more complex example that may not even look like a Splunk dashboard. So bear with me for a second, but basically what we've done here is built a demonstration that shows uh, taking, uh, say we're a fictional cell phone company, and we have, we have a customer service uh, application that we want to, whenever customers call up and say, I've had good or bad cell coverage, you know, I want to know what's going on. So what we're doing is we're combining the events from cell towers and actually combining the geodata to be able to pull in events. So, so we're in San Francisco today, so I'm going to drill in here and see what's going on with the cell tower. So each one of these hexagons represents the quality of signal coming out of each of the cell towers in this, in this area. And you can see some of these red Red ones means we got an outage going on around here, right? So, so basically what you're seeing is we're running a real-time search in Splunk, pulling events out of, out of all of our different, all the different cell towers, and seeing which cell towers are impacted by an outage. If I can click on this, I can drill in and basically run another search asking Splunk what cell phone customers are impacted by this, who real-time is, is, whose cell phone is in this area during this time. You can kind of flip this around and do a historical search and say, if I caught up, as if someone caught up the, um, the customer service rep and said, hey, I had terrible coverage today in San Francisco, um, what happened? I can say, okay, over the last hour, let's bring up someone's phone number. You can see but this is the track that that user took through San Francisco because of their cell phone being able to transmit data. And now I have the ability to go forwards and backwards in time and see how this user has moved through the city 
and combine that with his cell phone the tower data and realize that, of course, this customer had a really poor coverage during this time frame. So this is a, a user interface that you can imagine that is not a dashboard. It's not something that anyone would take and uh, put out of the box. But as a developer, you can build, take the power of the Splunk platform and build a custom interface that really is targeted at your business users, where they never have to see a search language or anything else. They're able to just get the power of that. Okay, great. So that was definitely building Splunk applications. There's lots of things you can do there. We have our whole framework. On the other end, we have a complete ability to basically extend and uh, integrate Splunk into your applications. So as I mentioned before, we have SDKs for six major languages, Java, JavaScript, Python, Ruby, C Sharp, and PHP. Um, each of these SDKs uses our, our REST API to pull data um, out of Splunk or, uh, or actually push data into Splunk. There's a few key things that you can do with that. You can extend the capability. You can extend the search language. I'll show a demonstration on how to do that. Um, or you can actually just even log from your applications directly into Splunk, something that a lot of people do. So there's, there's basically four or five different uh, main use cases for using this, the APIs and the REST API. One, as I mentioned, logging data directly into Splunk. Splunk's indexing tier um, can really absorb a lot of data. Most of the time, it's getting things directly off of logs. So you point Splunk at your log infrastructure and aggregate that all together. Um, additionally, Splunk can take data via TCP or UDP or HTTP endpoints, right? Um, or, like I mentioned, you can just hit our REST API directly pushing data in. Um, that, that is the case we're in. Additionally, if you want to take data out of Splunk, think of data, Splunk as a data source. Uh, you can run all of your Splunk searches via, via the SDKs and pull that into your environment. For example, um, in the ability for Comcast, they use those SDKs to then bring it into their customer service applications. So their users never ever see a Splunk UI. They just pull the data directly out of Splunk. So in that case, you can think of it more as a data source uh, for us. And additionally, many of our customers take some of the visualizations that we produce and provide that up into their own experiences. So all of that web experience that I mentioned earlier, you can take our, our JavaScript SDK and then integrate those visualizations into your applications if you already have a web application, for example, you want to provide to people. And then um, what you may also do, if you have a large uh, Splunk infrastructure, a lot of the management APIs are available for you to deploy Splunk, to manage it, update it, things like that. You can do that um, if you want to automate those capabilities. One thing you can also do is create your own inputs, right? So if you have a new uh, additional device or application source on your system, it could be a REST endpoint uh, in your environment, uh, we have these things called modular inputs that allow you to basically write them in in Python, Java, C Sharp, JavaScript, I can write these modular inputs that allows me to do something in a streaming way to go get data of another system. Uh, like I said, it's just, it could be just about anything. Uh, for example, we've written modular inputs to pull data off of REST endpoints on the public web to like Twitter data, right? So think of Twitter as Twitter is nothing more than, than 140 character events happening all day long by many, many people, right? So uh, being able to pull that data together is pretty powerful. And then the last thing, say for example, if you want to write your own custom search command, you want to do something that we don't have in, in Splunk. We have the capability of allowing you to write your own little modules that you can plug in and, and create your own, your own commands. And you can ship those with your applications. Quickly show you two demonstrations here. I'm a little bit more of a JavaScript guy, so I'll show you the JavaScript SDK. Um, let me bump up the font a bit. Maybe too much. So um, basically, these are if you download the SDK, uh, you'll get this sample application that kind of takes you through each one of the aspects. Um, so in this case, I just want to run uh, a simple search. So it's just a few lines of JavaScript code. 
I can run that, get that data back really quickly. It's just getting me all the application management information. I can also show you here. Here's an example of running searches. I can run a normal search, a blocking search, what have you. Um, but just getting data out of Splunk. As you can see, just really quick, a few lines of JavaScript code. In this case, we're using async to get that data back asynchronously. One of the things you might also be interested in doing, for example, from your web interfaces in the JavaScript example, I might want to let me find it here. Um, logging uh, directly into your application. So we have this we have a, basically the ability to log events from your web app into into your application. So if I run this, you'll see I look at my console. I had an error log. So basically, this events, so for example, if you have errors happening in JavaScript pages, you can have those things logged directly back into Splunk. Show you another demo of how to build a custom search command. So I'll bring up some blind text here real quick. So this is, a, so this is using the Python SDK. Uh, hopefully, you guys can see that text. Uh, I'll bump it up one more. Basically, it's a very simple API to be able to do two, you know, two phases. You have to uh, write some code on the map phase and then some code on the reduce phase. In this case, I'm just doing a simple sum function where I'm going to basically count the number of records that I get back during previous um, parts of the search pipeline and then return that and actually just roll those up. Now, obviously, all the code inside of here is completely up for you guys to write. So if you want to do way more complex uh, calculations um, or, or you want to hit a th another system to go get data and do things, you can do this in the search pipeline. Let me quickly show you what this looks like. So I have this capability here where, so this is a normal search. I'm just going to pull data out of index. And then I'm going to pull this away for a second. This is just normal search. I'm going to get back 200 items. But when I add in to my search line this custom, I have my line count function. Now I've done that processing in that previous code that I showed, and I just returned 200. Obviously, a very simplistic example. But as you can see, you're able to add your own search commands. Yeah, for example, we've talked to people that have done, gone out to R and done statistical analysis and things along those lines and brought that back into Splunk. Um, so there's a lot of openness to be able to do that. The one thing that's, that's uh, pretty important is there's just so many different ways, different extension points in Splunk between the search API, the REST endpoints, creating your own modular inputs. Really, if, if you can see something we've done in Splunk, it's probably a, an extension point for you guys to take it, take it further. So additionally, one of the things that's really important to us is to make developers productive when they're doing things in Splunk. So it's one thing that we've done, as you've seen through this, this presentation, we're using a lot of technologies that you're already familiar with. Um, we're not really investing in a lot of proprietary stuff. We're using stuff that you guys already know how to use. For example, if you're using Java, um, we have a great SDK for Java, along with um, we have an Eclipse plugin that allows you to get started in your development teams using Eclipse. And it will pull in a bunch of templates and starter code. Uh, so for example, if you want to learn how to do one of the modular inputs, it's really quick and easy to get that going. Uh, we've also worked with the Spring organization to, to get a Spring example of that working. Um, and then obviously, we have a C Sharp SDK, and that works fully in Visual Studio if you have a .NET shop. And you know, before I finish, I think it's really important that you know, we, uh, we're always taking feedback. We're a very open organization, particularly on the developer side of things. Um, so Q, all of the, the things I just showed you, as far as all of the SDKs, the web framework, all open source on GitHub. So if you go out to GitHub slash Splunk, you can find all of our public repositories. And uh, we highly recommend pull requests or just even opening up issues if you find anything. Additionally, if you have feature ideas, one thing that we've recently done is uh, created a user voice site called splunkdev.uservoice.com. That allows you to add suggestions that we, uh, and then people can vote them up. And we can find out from, from you guys what's the most important features that we should be working on. 
it's kind of a public backlog, if you will. Um, and then, as always, you can always hit us up on Twitter. Uh, we like that a lot. Um, so I am um, just about out of time. Um, I will, I don't know if I have a few seconds for questions, but I will, they've said I'm supposed to be somewhere to answer questions, but our booth is right over there. So I'd be happy to answer questions if you guys want to after, after this. Um, and that's it. I made it exactly 20 minutes, I can't believe it.